I'm always happy when Gordon's here. Oh, yeah. Reg, let me ask you this, right? Yeah. Gordon Ramsay's coming to your house for dinner. Yeah. He's coming over. Ooh. You've got to cook a meal. What do you cook? I would probably do the best thing that I know how to make. Go on. Uh, grilled cheese. Right. With uh, <laughs> a very good uh, aged cheddar. So to be clear, oh, what, you, what you've said is you would make a three-star Michelin chef, arguably one of the one of the greatest, and you'd make him a grilled cheese. That's <laughs> that's what you've said. That's what it is. Yes. Yeah. What about what about you? What about you? Spoonful of almond butter, handful of almonds. <laughs> that's it. What am I? I'm not gonna like outcook him, but you know you what's great? You don't outcook him. You... But it's about. You are, you're like, I'm trying to impress yeah. Gordon Ramsay. I, do you want this, like, Beef Wellington that I, a comedy writer, spent six hours f***ing up, or... But have you or ever... You, or, but have you ever done his... Have you ever done Gordon's Beef Wellington recipe? No, I... It's the one. It's the one. OK. Gordon, years ago now... This is maybe about... Ben, when was it we went for dinner at Gordon Ramsay's house? Oh, it was Christmas. Uh... I want to say 13 years ago. I'm going to say 2012. Yeah, all right. So, yeah, yeah, 12, 13 years ago, we went round and Gordon said, come for dinner. Why are you laughing at this, Rob? Why is this a big deal for you? No, it's just because you said uh, 2012. Yep, I was right, 12, 13 years ago. <laughs> it was quite a, uh, it was a pretty simple piece of math. Well, it's 11. It's 11. It was 11 it, years ago. It was 10, 10 years ago in like a month, but 12, 13 years ago. Sure. It was 11 years ago, and I was like, I said 12, 12, 13. And it's 11. I think yeah. that's all right. Yeah, 10 years, 10 years in a month. No, it's, no, to, no. 15 we're not, years ago. We're not ago. going down to the day. We're not going down to four, the day, four. Rob. We're not, I think I, I was, okay. So, all right, I, I, I apologize. Fine, 20 years ago. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry that I was off by, I actually don't think it was 2012. I actually don't think it was 2012. It was 2012. Sorry? It was 2012. Like I say, I actually don't think it was 2012. It Any... was 2012. OK. <laughs> I swear, I'll tell you ago. what. I, some nights I cannot <laughs> wait to get out of here. <laughs> uh... I don't mean that at all. Um, no, so. Gordon says, hey, you guys should come over for dinner. We're like, oh, no, it wasn't 2012. <laughs> it wasn't 2012 because Jules was pregnant with Max because Gordon opened an incredible bottle of wine and Jules was like, I can't drink. And it wasn't, I think it was 2009, brah. <laughs> Do I tell you, remind you your son's 11? <laughs> yeah. So the math works on 2012. Jules is pregnant. No, because 2012 he was born. OK. He was born in 2011. He's 12 in March. He was born in 2011, which means she was pregnant. So it was Christmas 2010, which puts it, Rob, 12, 13 years ago. <laughs> That's it. That's the end of the show. She was, she was pregnant because he opened this wine. I remember Jules going, ah, oh, I really want some. Anyway, this has really gone off track. <laughs> it's such a boring story. It's irrelevant. No, Kate, you have no, to finish. It's boring. You absolutely have it's to boring. finish it. What did you eat though? What did you make? So we had to, we were late because we had to go somewhere else. And Gordon said, Don't you worry, I'm gonna cook you your own beef Wellington. Yeah. And he did. They were eating something else, and we got there and it was, oh, 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 so yeah. beautiful. <laughs> It, it, it was glorious. And wh when was this again? <laughs> it's that time. It's time for the news. news. And there was some big news last night right here in Los Angeles because LeBron James broke Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's 38-year record <laughs> to become the NBA's all-time leading scorer Congrats, LeBron. I know you're watching. The game stopped for 10 minutes while LeBron celebrated. It was just enough time for Kareem to step onto the court, make a layup, and take the title back again. 
I've got to say, I was watching it last night. As a man in my 40s, it was very depressing. <laughs> It was deeply depressing to hear the announcers talk about it. They were like, it's unbelievable! He's doing this at 38 years old! <laughs> He's ancient, older than time itself! It's a miracle the man can even walk at this age! <laughs> Here's LeBron on the court thanking the fans and his teammates. Man, thank you guys. I'm glad he did it that way around. It's way better than going, thanks, man, f you guys. <laughs> I think if you break the NBA all-time scoring record, you should get to swear on television whenever you want. For the rest of your life, it's fine. You can be like, my name's LeBron James. I think you should drink a Gatorade. <laughs> now, of course, the big political news from last night was President Biden delivered his State of the Union address. The speech was the longest of Biden's presidency at 73 minutes. But honestly, it was so fun and fast-paced, it really only felt like 71 minutes. <laughs> this is true. Biden spoke 9,191 words, beating Bill Clinton's 1995 speech by one word. Biden was like, see, LeBron ain't the only legend sharing records tonight. <laughs> the night got off to an odd start, with First Lady Jill Biden and Second Gentleman Doug Emhoff greeting each other by kissing fully on the lips. <laughs> Look at that. The State of the Union is extremely horny. <laughs> I get it, it's an awkward moment, all eyes are on you, you know, the pressure to look normal is so high and you go and accidentally kiss the president's wife on the lips. <laughs> now, Jill Biden actually had Bono there as a guest, um, but here he is, right here. Look at Bono, there. I love that he's watching and clapping like, oh, yeah, slip a tongue in, man, slip a tongue in. <laughs> you know what happened? I think he popped a Bono. Before Biden even had a chance to speak, things got a bit contentious with Republican Mitt Romney telling Republican George Santos in a tense exchange, you don't belong here. Here they are, just here. Look at that. <laughs> Mitt Romney rolling with some real vice principal at high school rally energy. <laughs> it's a very awkward exchange. Romney introduced himself like, uh, excuse me, I'm Senator Mitt Romney. And Santos was like, no, I think you'll find I'm Senator <laughs> Mitt Romney. <laughs> But when he walked in, when he walked in, you could tell, you could tell Mitt Romney was ready for a fight. He had the smell of whole milk on his breath. <laughs> Senator Kirsten Sinema stood out in the crowd with her outfit, a bright yellow dress with poofy shoulders. <laughs> Biden showed up to deliver the State of the Union speech, and Kirsten Sinema showed up, as I assumed, to deliver a bridesmaid speech. <laughs> now, look. Kirsten, she is a very accomplished woman, capable woman, a, a sitting US senator. It, it isn't fair to reduce her to the clothing she wears, but this is a late night talk show, and she showed up to the State of the Union dressed like a piece of bow tie pasta. <laughs> we can't not say anything. We have to say something. We have to. Look, you all know this about me, Ian. I'm not afraid to talk politics. What's your favorite pasta dish? <laughs> Can't be a cacio e pepe. I just feel like it's a bit easy. It went. A cacio e pepe. It's easy to do bad. It's easy it's to do poorly. Pepper, pepper, cheese, and egg, isn't it? Right. And if you can make those three ingredients sing, brother, you got something going. <laughs> I, I'll give you that. Yeah. What's your favorite pasta? I like dish? a pappardelle. Oh. Pappardelle. Yeah, exactly. I enjoy saying it. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoy eating it. It's all spicy, right? Pappardelle. I like a pappardelle ragu. Yeah. Pappardelle. Yeah, is that how you'd say? Paparadeli. <laughs> it's, it's a butterfly. <laughs> That's what you know, they love that in Italian they restaurants. They do. When you do an Italian accent when you oh, order yeah. it, they love it. Juana Andredo Procinto. What about you? What about you, Reg? Go to, go to pasta. You're in an Italian restaurant. What'd you go for? Probably. Paparadeli. Okay. <laughs> Throughout the speech, oh. I, well, I just jump in. I, I, I have to jump mention in. it because it's also very good. And gnocchi is also very good. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a potato based it's pasta, so I'm not even sure it counts. Folks, it's one of those <laughs> nights. 
Throughout the speech, House Republicans put the spotlight on themselves with boos, taunts, grunts and sarcastic chortles. Here's the moment when things got really contentious. Some Republicans want Medicare and Social Security to sunset. I'm not saying it's a majority. <laughs> Look at Biden, he's absolutely loving it. He's this close. <laughs> he's this close to stepping away from the podium being like, oh, what? <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> it did get rowdy. It got rowdy. One Republican he even screamed, we want Jill and Doug to kiss again. <laughs> Republican Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, kept standing up. <laughs> Republican Marjorie Taylor Greene kept standing up and booing the president throughout the speech. At one point, even yelled, liar. Out of force of habit, George Santos immediately jumped up and was like, no, I'm not. <laughs> Here she is during one of her outbursts. Look at that. If you're gonna if you're gonna heckle the president, definitely do it while you're dressed like a Disney villain. <laughs> <laughs> the list of people harassed by Marjorie Taylor Greene now includes President Biden and every bartender at any TGI Fridays. <laughs> like, ma'am, I'm sorry, well, I'm cutting you off. You've had enough. Like, boo! <laughs> <laughs> oh, <I> <laughs> Biden used the opportunity to trap Republicans into keeping Social Security and Medicare intact. Have a look. Well, folks, as we all apparently agree, Social Security and Medicare is off the, off the books now, right? They're not to be stopped. All right. That's the way, Joe. That's how you get Jill back. <laughs> That was such a crowd pleaser, I wouldn't be surprised if, if President Biden opens every meeting with Social Security and Medicare are off the books now. And they're like, uh, sir, you're, you're pardoning a turkey. <laughs> For the most part, Biden stuck to the prepared speech, except at one point he got very worked up talking about being in competition with China. Name me a world leader who changed places with Xi Jinping. Name me one. Name me one. Oh, I don't know. I don't like it when he does that. It gives me like pop quiz vibes. <laughs> and I'm there like, ah, oh, is it name, name me what is it? Uh, Justin Trudeau? I'm gonna say <laughs> final answer, Justin Trudeau. <laughs> Why is he so angry about it? Does he think the US is trying to trade him to China like it's a sports team? <laughs> Overall, Biden's message was clear and forceful, or at the very least, it was forceful. Make no mistake. If you try anything to raise the cost of presenting jobs, I will veto it. Sorry, what was that? What'd you say? Can you repeat that? Presenting jobs. <laughs> so just raise the cost of presenting jobs. It's a good strategy. Just keep guessing. Like, veto what? Hey, that's for Biden to know and you to find out. Look at Vice President Kamala Harris in the back. Straight up. That's a true friend. <laughs> She's like, didn't understand a word. But I'm clapping anyway. And that, on that note, I am James Corden. And that, that was the frizzing. We'll be right back with more of the Lay Lay Show.